today we're going to be talking about a show which has come under a bit of controversy recently, Little Britain. And understandably so, because a lot of the characters are insultingly offensive, um, some of them are just not at all funny and just annoying. But among them there are also some really funny interesting characters which bring life to the show. So today we're going to be looking at the top 10 best characters from Little Britain. Number 10 is David Thomas, aka the only gay in the village. Admittedly this one hasn't aged very well, but I think it's a really sort of funny character how he's trying to be as sort of gay as possible, but then he what likes being the only gay in the village. He's kind of a woe, making it a bit more of a woe story and saying, oh, my friend, we I'm so down, I am the only gay in the village. I mean, it's a fairly kind of cheap joke, but I think it's good because each sketch they also bring something slightly different or how, like, you know, he wants to have like a big gay night or something, or he sees someone who says that there's another gay in the village and he tries to make out like he's not actually, yeah, the other gay isn't actually gay and he's the only gay in the village. I mean, I'm just kind of repeating myself here, but. That's kind of what the sketch is, it's kind of nicely simple. Number 9 is Maggie and Judy, which again, it's kind of not aged especially well. But I, I, again, it's just a very simple concept which always ends up being kind of funny. Then one of them eats something, Maggie or Judy, I can't remember which one, they eat something and upon hearing it's made by like, I don't know, a Norris or she just throws it up. Which, if anything, that's me more making fun of like, the older generation than like the minority groups which I just think it's I mean there's nothing really more to say about it it's just kind of funny and it's, it's kind of toilet humor just seeing the really fake looking sick it's kind of laughably bad effects or really make the sketch so funny and it's just like how there's a slight build of a how suddenly she hears who made the cake and then the <laughs> is just brilliantly kind of dumb. <laughs> Number 8 is Mr. Cleaves, and I really like how every time this sketch tries to do something completely different, sometimes he is just like, does a quiz about crisps, sometimes like he says like nonsensical questions, sometimes like there's a new boy in the class, sometimes he's like keeps on changing within so something else, reading like the book. And yeah, it's, it's just always very different and fresh. It's always quite sort of surprising, and he just does a really good job of playing like an eccentric teacher. I just find it really funny and you, kind of you, and kind of unique because there aren't many sketches which provide something different. Most of them do the same thing like each time, but this one is it always tries to do something a little different. I find. Number seven is Linda, and this is just like. It's kind of offensive, but it just shows like how much of an unlikable character she is when she... It's the kind of same thing does happen each time, but, and it's kind of predictable, but that's kind of why we like it, because she was also saying like nice things about the person, like how... Martin, it's Linda, how can I describe him? And then one mildly offensive thing, and then a really offensive nickname. And at the end, it's really funny when all the like characters come together at the same time. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's just kind of simple humour, but I like it. Number six is Harvey, and I kind of feel that this is sort of a parody of like some posh boys who still get well, not not literally, but still get breastfed until they're grown ups. I just think it's just so well done, how they seem like a perfectly ordinary family, although it is a little odd seeing Matt Lucas playing at David Walliams' dad. <laughs> I think that just adds to it, something. how like they just seem fairly like a standard middle class family until Harvey says, want bitty, want bitty, and then <laughs> it's just kind of, he treats them like a baby, but it's just, everyone else around them is just really shocked and just like, she like pats him on the back and he goes there. <laughs> it's just like wonderfully silly and simple. Number five is Kenny the hypnotist, 
and this one is just it's so quotable i mean i have said look into my eyes look into my eyes the eyes the eyes not around the eyes not like around the eyes look into my eyes more times than i had to mention it's just such an iconic phrase it's just how he is constantly like trying to get out of scrapes by using it in fpa situations but then it's always really funny how it like he thinks it works but it doesn't work it's not fully explained which just greatly adds to the randomness of this sketch and how like this like when he's trying to sell dvds and then like he keeps on hypnotizing the guy and then he's just like don't push it <laughs> it's just it's just that kind of humor to just random stupid unexplained i love it number four is <laughs> Anne. It's just how, like, she, I think the best part of this sketch is how she suddenly, like, goes when she's on the phone, she's like, hello, and she just acts like a he, acts just like a normal person. I mean, I mean, it doesn't get so, it kind of gets a bit old later, but just the first time I saw it, I was laughing so much when she's, like, in the hospital and she, like, moves the table, and then, you know, all those kind of things, like, when she just moves the table, she, like, destroys the flowers, and then, like, she licks the Pope and all those kind of things, how it just seems kind of normal, but then she's just kind of does crazy stuff to really sort of shock the audience, and it really works. Number three is Dennis Waterman, and this sketch, it kind of makes fun of itself. The whole is so obvious, like, you know, David Williams is like six foot three or whatever, and he's playing the little one, and Matt Lucas is a big person, <laughs> but it's just how it, they keep on like passing things on, like passing objects between them, how it's like really big in David's hand, but then tiny in Matt's hand, and it's just so stupid, it is just like, it's wonderful how they just make, they can sort of make fun of themselves and say like, oh, this isn't a good show to themselves, and it's just like the whole iconic line of, right theme tune? Sing the theme tune! And how he just keeps on singing these sort of really bad songs. It's just really funny. It's just, because I love this kind of dumb humour of it. It's just laughably poor. And how he sometimes accidentally pass the big thing. So that's just, that is the perfect way of how to break the fourth wall. Number two, Mr. Man. And uh, this sketch, again, is. The the delivery is just so perfect from David Williams. How he just like he asks like ridiculous requests, but he just seems like so serious as he asks it. It's like, I want a pirate memory game, please. And how he just never looks around. And the expressions on Roy and Margaret's face, or Roy's face, and how he keeps on showing Margaret, Margaret, and the long yap. I just that is just. It never gets any less funny. It's always like the ridiculous thing he asks for. It's like you know it's going to be something ridiculous, but it just gets funnier every time. It's like it's a rare thing. Like most sketches, like aren't able to say consistently funny, but it just this one does it so well. Before I get to number one, here are three honourable mentions: Vicky Pollard, Marjorie Dawes. Uh, Samantha and her teacher. And the number one best Little Britain character slash sketch is Lou Todd and Andy Pipkin. I mean, I know it's a really obvious choice, but who else could it be? I mean, they are some of the most iconic characters throughout British comedy. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I, my family gets so annoyed at me and I quote, I just quote Andy all the time. I'm like, yeah, Lou, I'm that one. Um, it's just so perfect how it's the same joke, but it's always in like a totally different situation. Like how it's either like him getting out of the wheelchair, and then how Lou is just, he doesn't have any idea what is going on, which is just, it's, it's kind of dumb, but that is why, again, like most scripts are dumb, but like that is why it is so funny. The other one being like, Lou has to put and go through like a massive kerfuffle, which is another very iconic line from the sketch what a kerfuffle and then uh, Andy's just going I don't like it I mean 
I generally don't like to go for popular things. I like to go for like a more obscure thing for number one. But there really is just no topping this hilarious sketch. Also love how Andy keeps on sort of saying like, well, you never hear him say it, like pro profound things. And Lou keeps on like repeating, it's like, I thought you said that George might, uh, uh, that Jesus told told us, right, you found he's uh, emotionally that luster. Yeah, no. Stop repeating everything I say. And then, like, he just kind of, like, he seems like he's, seems stupid, but he's like a hidden genius, which I just think is, it seems dumb, but it's actually a really cleverly done sketch. And that's why, in my opinion, Lou and Andy are the number one best, like, characters from Little Britain. Uh, that's it, really. Bye-bye.